Welcome to section 4.1. In this section, we're looking at polynomial functions. And we'll look at polynomial functions really over the next two sections, but you have some familiarity with them. They're going to ask for certain things by giving you a polynomial function and asking you um, for some information from it. And then they're also going to um, give us um, some information, ask us to establish the polynomial. And it kind of seemed like the homework was in the reverse order where they gave you some information, had you come up with the polynomial. And then um, then they went and gave you a polynomial function and asked you for some information. So what I'd like to do before we look at the um, the homework that is um, the homework problems that I saw was just give you an overview. So let's just look at what a polynomial function is. A polynomial function could be something like x squared plus 13x plus 30, something like that. We know what this guy is. This is a quadratic function, right? But it's polynomial in nature because as you look at the variables, and especially the exponents on those variables, all the exponents are whole numbers. And that's what a polynomial is. So a polynomial um, function will have uh, no bottom part, no fractional powers or anything, just nice twos, threes, and fives power. Now, you know a lot about this function right here because we've been dealing with it over the years. We first saw it in an Algebra 1 class. We really looked at it in Algebra 2, and we even looked at it in this class a little bit earlier in Chapter um, chapter 2. No, nah, sorry, Chapter 3 or 2 or 3. I think it was 2, actually, where we were looking at... Um, uh, finding the vertex of it and everything. That's not what we're so concerned with here. We're concerned with finding what they call, books will call it something different, x-intercepts, which our book definitely calls it, and our book also refers to them as zeros. So that's one of the main things we want to know about a function. So let's talk about this function in general and um, talk about what we know. First of all, we know the degree of the function. The degree of the function is the highest power that you see when it's all multiplied out. So when it's all multiplied out, this is a second degree polynomial because the highest power that's on x is a square. So we can see that right away. We can see it's zeros because you and I know how to factor. This is the factors of 30 that add to be 13. No problem for us. That's 10 and 3. Right? We've been doing that forever. And so what are the x-intercepts or the zeros? Well, the zeros for this function or the x-intercepts are negative 10 and negative 3. Now be careful when you're in the homework because they're going to have you list out the zeros. Make sure to pay attention to directions. I saw some directions that said list them in ascending order. So if you put the negative 3 first and then the negative 10, it would not give you credit. So please follow those directions so that you get immediate credit for your good work. Um, and so it would be good to have you follow those directions for future classes. So. Um, so no problem, we got the zeros of negative 10 and negative 3. Notice that these would be the same zeros no matter if I change this function. What if I change this function to be uh, 2x squared plus 26x plus 60? Well, we're still going to get the same zeros because I'm going to factor out the 2. And... I would factor this guy the same way we did above. And the 2 is not a 0, so that's not producing any 0. This is 0 whenever any one of those factors are 0. Well, 2 can't be 0. And so the zeros still are negative 10 and negative 3 only. My point in showing you that is there's uh, an infinite number of polynomials that have the exact same zeros. And so sometimes when we find them, we're just finding one representation of one. Um, so just to keep that in the back of your mind. Um, we'll talk about other things along the way too. They're going to want to know um, something that they call end behavior. And let me just briefly describe end behavior. End behavior is how the function 
behaves for very large um, inputs, right? Whether positive or negative. So it's it's the it's how it's behaving at the end. So it's like plugging in negative a million, negative a billion, positive a million, positive a billion, like way out there, right? And it's gonna follow a function. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it will look just like that function because um, that first part of it really um, starts to dominate. End behavior is very easy to identify. End behavior is determined by a power function. Okay, And the power function is simply this. The power function is the biggest term in the polynomial. So for example, in my example where I had f of x is equal to x squared plus 13x plus 30, the power function is simply x squared the biggest term going on. It's that easy, right? That's what's going to determine this end behavior. So what does this function look like? It looks exactly like the x squared function uh, for large values of x. So what does that mean? It's going straight up. We know what that x squared function looks like. It's a parabola, and so it's going straight up. If I had a video on, you'd see both my hands in the air saying, hey, we're going straight up. So um, that's great. So we can get an idea of how these functions look. Um, the other thing to realize is um, something like this. Um, I'd like to have you look at the, the graph of this function. What we found out, whoops, let me get rid of that highlighter. What we found out for this function is that it has two zeros. One of the zeros was way down here at negative 10. The other zero was um, at negative three, right? And so we know what this thing looks like. We know that it's a parabola. Now, I, I didn't find the vertex, and I really actually don't care right now. What I want you to see is what's happening here at these intercepts. This is what our book re will refer to as crosses. So my parabola crosses at those two zeros. And the reason why it crosses is because of multiplicity. Let me give you another function. f of x is equaling x minus 2 the quantity squared. So let's take a look at what this one looks like. We know about this one. This is a parabola that opens up whose vertex is 2 to the right and up nothing, right? From our work we did in chapter 2. That's why I wanted you to do that work first. It's the regular standard opening parabola from there. But look what happens here. This is what our book will refer to as touches. Some books refer to it as bouncing off or something like that. Well, let's talk about why that one touched and this one up here crossed. Everything has to do with the type of zero we have. So let's come back here and let's name what the zero is. I don't think that's going to be hard for us. What can we plug in for x that's going to make that zero? One number, two. So this thing only has one zero, where up here it had two zeros. Our zeros were negative 10 and negative 3, right? Because of the factorization. Well, take a look at the x plus 10 and the x plus 3. Even though it's not written, they have an exponent, right? I'm going to go ahead and write one in, and I'll do it in red so that it stands out. I'm going to put a 1 up there. We don't write the 1, but we know it theoretically exists. This is a multiple. They will talk about these zeros as having a multiplicity of 1, right? And down here, if I look at the multiplicity of this zero, it's whatever that exponent is, this has a multiplicity of 2. 
And what you find is that every time you have even multiplicity, it touches. And every time you have odd multiplicity, it crosses. Right? So odd multiplicity. And we'll get reinforcement of that along the way. So there's our foundation. And so take that all in and maybe it will make sense. But let me just keep building something. Again, I'm going to make this up and then I'll do some examples straight from the homework. Let's take a look at this function, fully factored. This is what they're going to give you here. They're going to give you a lot of factorized things because they want you to play around with this idea. I'm going to do something like x plus 2 squared times x minus 3 to the third times x uh, plus 5. And what I want to do is ask you some things. The first thing I want to know is what are the x-intercepts. Okay. Well, I don't think that's going to be too bad for you. And then I also want to know what the multiplicity is, because that will help. So as we, I would just go factor by factor. So you wouldn't make these determinations unless it was factored. So let's look at the very first one. I'll highlight it in yellow. Here's the first factor. What's going to make that zero? Because whatever it does is going to make the whole thing zero and therefore be an x-intercept. Well, we see negative 2 does. And what's its multiplicity? Its multiplicity is 2. Now, what 2 am I looking at? I'm looking at that 2 up there, the exponent 2. Perfect. We have our first x-intercept. Let's move to the next one. So I'm going to come in here and get rid of some stuff. Got rid of too much there. And put a 2 back in there. And then I'm going to highlight this one in blue. Here's our second one. So what comes out of that one? Well, a positive 3 is an x-intercept. And what's its multiplicity? Well, it happens to be 3. Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> It'll be okay with this last one. If we look at the very last one that's not highlighted, it's a x-intercept of negative 5. Again, also could have been called a 0. And the multiplicity of it is 1. Do you see that? That there is no exponent, so there's an exponent of 1 up there that we're not writing. So that's how we're going to deal with these things. They're going to ask us um, just to uh, identify the x-intercepts, identify the multiplicity. The, and they're going to put it all together in 4.2. So here's the other thing that it asks. And I'll keep it in this chart format because it's kind of nice. At the x-intercept, they're going to ask, does it cross or touch? And so what's the answer? Let's go to the very first 0, the 0 of negative 2 that has multiplicity of 2. Well, your question you're asking yourself is, does it have even or odd multiplicity? It has even multiplicity, so it's going to touch. You're going to picture that x squared graph just touching, right? And so it has an even multiplicity we're going to touch. How about the second 0 of 3? It has odd multiplicity, so it's going to cross. And at negative 5, um, it's going, it has a multiplicity of 1, so it's going to cross. Okay, And so here's... It, it kind of helps us get a very quick picture. Again, they're going to put this all together um, in 4.2. Right now, they're just wanting to know if it crosses or touches, but it ultimately really helps us just get a quick sketch of what's going on. The next thing that they're going to ask for is the end behavior, or what power function does it follow. If you're going to do end behavior, you got to picture this thing all multiplied out and think about what's the biggest term going to be. So the way I do that is I take a look. Let me just rewrite the function down here so that I'm not too far away from it. And I'll move this all up. Okay. I picture multiplying everything out. So if I were to just take this first piece right here, so I'll take this first piece right here, and I were to multiply it out, the biggest thing coming out of that is x squared. That's my biggest multiplier out of that. 
so remember what's going to happen it's going to be x squared plus I don't care because you care only about the biggest one and you're going to take that times this guy so I'll highlight or I'll go over that in red and the biggest thing coming out of that one is going to be an x cubed again I know there's other stuff but you don't care about it because you care about the biggest things hitting the biggest things and then I'll leave this one in black um, and we have x plus 5 now if you multiplied all that out the biggest products gonna be when the x squared hits the x cubed and then hits the x so what's x times x cubed times x squared that's two x's five x's six x's this is gonna follow the biggest ah, <laughs> the biggest term coming out of there is not x squared it's x to the six that's gonna be your biggest term plus and again you don't really care what happens next because the power function it follows is always the biggest um, term that's there that's what we're dealing with in this section those are the questions you're gonna ask now what do they know about you well they know you're awesome that you can handle a lot and so they're going to give you different things so um, and fractions and all of that stuff but you don't care because you can handle that so don't get dismayed in all of that so I I debating whether to stop this video and go to another one but I think I'll just continue knowing that you can always um, come back or pause the video this is the first example that I saw in the homework that illustrates this. Now it's not the first homework problem. I'll come back and do those in another video. Um, but I think you need this foundation first before answering those initial questions that happen to be in the homework. So here's an example that I found in the homework and you'll see one that's strikingly similar. Negative 4 x plus 1 quarter squared x plus 2 cubed. And what are they asking for? they're asking for the x-intercept and they're asking for whether it crosses or touches that's what they want um, and then they want to know about the end behavior and so let me come in here I don't need it to be that long so let's worry about that first question this is part a what's the x-intercept and do they cross or touch there so negative 4 doesn't produce any any roots but x plus 1 fourth does obviously negative 1 fourth causes us to be 0 there now its multiplicity is 2 which is even so it's gonna touch and we're moving on and then we go to the next factor well negative 2 is gonna make that 0 it has a multiplicity of 3 which is odd so it's going to cross and you're done with that x-intercept and whether it crosses or touches. Now, the end behavior, or what they sometimes call the power function, so I'll write end behavior. Now, you want to picture this thing getting all multiplied out. What you would have from the first factor, the biggest thing is negative 4. Don't forget that first factor. The biggest thing coming out of the next one is x squared. And the biggest thing coming out of the last one is x cubed. You put all that together and you'll have the end behavior. Don't just write x to the fifth. You'll miss it. We need the negative 4 with it because what the negative 4 tells us is that it gets flipped over the uh, x-axis, right? And so we want to know that. And so what's the end behavior or the power function that it follows? Negative 4 x to the fifth. It's going to behave just like that. Uh, it looks a lot like x cubed, right? And so the negative would flip that around and, and go up, but we'll worry about the graphs later. They may also ask you for the maximum number of turning points. That's easy. The maximum number of turning points is always the degree of the polynomial, and ours will be a fifth degree polynomial, right? Because the leading term is 4x to the fifth. So it's, it's always the degree of the polynomial minus 1. And so in this case, there's four maximum turning points. And so they'll, they'll ask that type of question. That's it. Those are the questions that they're asking, right? And so what will they do? they'll just give you varying ones. I like this next one that I saw. So we'll call this example two. 
from the homework. f of x is equal to 1 third. That's not really why I like it. 3x squared plus 8 squared x squared plus 6. Same questions. What are our x-intercepts? What it, does it, I'm sorry, does it cross or touch? We'll start there. Now, I've seen people list one-third as an x-intercept. It's not. One-third, uh, if you plug it in, does not make this thing zero. I, people are doing that because they see the one-third, but nothing makes one-third zero, so there's no x-intercept from the one-third. If we go to the next one, 3x squared plus 8. Love this one. So take a look. When does 3x squared plus 8 equal 0? Think about that for a little bit. Okay, what would you do? Well, let's try to solve it. I would move over the 8. I would divide by 3 to isolate the x squared, and then I take the square root of both sides, except I'm not going to. Because I know, and you know, that there is no way that something squared would ever equal a negative. And so there are no zeros coming from that one. So let me be really clear. This produ one third produced no zeros. This produces no zeros as well. So you can get in your mind that the book made a mistake. It didn't. Okay. And then what about this? X squared plus six. What does that look like? Well, what makes that zero? Nothing. No zeros whatsoever. So you would mark a little box that says there are no x-intercepts. And so that was actually a problem in there. So there's no x-intercepts whatsoever. This thing is either entirely above or below the x-axis. It never crosses it. It never touches it. Okay, so interesting. So you, I love that example because of that. And there's another reason why I like this example. And I didn't make this up, right? You have to realize that these are here because we, we really think a lot of you that you can rationalize through these thought processes, especially knowing where you're going major-wise. So let's go ahead and find the end behavior. Let's go ahead and find that power function it follows by taking every single factor and writing out the biggest term. So factor number one, one-third, cannot be overlooked. Now think about at the 3x squared plus 8 squared. What's the biggest thing coming out of that? Hopefully you see that it's 9x to the fourth. The biggest term coming out of that is going to be a 9x to the fourth. The 3x squared, all squared just like it was previously here, x squared and x cubed. Now I have 3x squared, which is 9x to the fourth. And then obviously for the last one, um, sorry, um, it, I just get a nice x squared, right? It's just right in front of me. So what does this thing look like? Well, a third of 9 is 3, x to the sixth. Now what does an x to the sixth look like? Well, it looks strikingly like um, an x to the second. Here's what x to the sixth looks like. It hugs the x-axis and it pretty much shoots straight up, but it's not straight up. There's some bend in there, but it's just like the parabola. So what's happening is I have this upwards parabola that's centered above the x-axis. It's a pretty poor parabola, but... Um, but that's why it has no zeros, is because it, it's all above the x-axis. We didn't know that until we investigated its zeros, but we know a lot now. Okay, and that's what you're going to be doing. Let's look at one last example, example 3. And then I'll make a new video, still in this 4-1 area. f of x is equal to negative 7x squared times x squared minus 3. Same questions. What are the zeros or the x-intercepts? I'll start to use those interchangeably. Does it cross or touch? Okay, that's what's in this 4-1 area. So hopefully we see that there's two factors. Let's look at this first one here. I'll highlight it in red. I know you see what makes that zero. It's just zero. And that the multiplicity of that zero is two, and so it touches at that point. How about x squared minus 3? Does it ever equal 0? Absolutely. 
because x squared could be 3 when for x equaling plus or minus root 3 so this thing would factor almost so be careful with this there's two individual roots here it factors as x minus root 3 times x plus root 3 you really want to see it like that because there's two individual roots both having multiplicity of 1 so it crosses at those points and we would use that in the next section to graph let's talk about end behavior well that's where we take the highest power of each factor so that's a negative 7x squared right we're taking the leading term from each times an x squared and so we have negative 7x to the fourth is our end behavior there so in the end it's going to be shooting down and going to infinity is what we know off of that that means we're dealing with the degree 4 polynomial which you probably saw from the beginning so the maximum number of turning points I didn't do that in the last one um, so the maximum number of turning points right where it turns around would be one less than that so three it could only at maximum turn around three times in that whole uh, area so it helps us again to graph uh, really the power function the end behavior and the crossing and touching are what we really need to be successful in 4.2 and you'll get a bunch of reinforcement in this as we move into the 4.2 area and it becomes somewhat repetitive at that point um, but this is a great foundation for you so um, tr look at this and then absolutely look at the other video as well and then you'll be prepared to do the homework.